Remember Frankenstein? A scientist defies nature to reanimate the dead, or reanimate her with its glowing green serum reviving the deceased? These films now seem oddly prescient, life and death once seen as binary opposites. But what if this belief is changing? A third state, a biological twilight zone, blurring life and death. Recent discoveries suggest this might be reality. Imagine death as a transition into a new realm. This is the brave new world we're discovering. Fasten your seatbelts. The journey is about to get interesting. The third state, also known as the post-mortem state, is not about zombies or Frankensteinian reanimations. It refers to a biological phenomenon observed in cells and tissues after the organism has died. Certain cells, like skin cells, can survive for hours or even days post-mortem. Recent research shows these cells display surprising activity and organization, driven by specific genes, aptly named Lazarus genes. Death is a gradual process, a fading away rather than a hard stop. What does this mean for our definitions of life and death? In 2017, researchers at the University of Washington made a groundbreaking discovery. They studied gene expression in zebrafish and mice after death. Instead of a decline, they observed a surge in certain genes, peaking 24 to 48 hours post-mortem. These Lazarus genes are involved in cell growth, development, and immunity. Some are even linked to cancer, explaining uncontrolled cell growth in tumors. At death, cells might attempt a last-ditch effort to survive, echoing the will to live. While the Lazarus gene research is fascinating, it's not the only evidence suggesting the existence of a third state. Enter xenobots and anthrobots, synthetic life forms that blur the line between living and non-living matter. Xenobots, created using cells from frog embryos, are microscopic biological robots that can move, self-heal, and even work together in swarms. Anthrobots, on the other hand, are created from reanimated insect parts, often spider legs chosen for their agility and strength. These biobots, while not technically alive in the traditional sense, display an uncanny ability to organize, adapt, and even replicate some functions typically associated with living organisms. They challenge our very definition of life and raise profound questions about the nature of consciousness and the potential of bioengineering. Are these biobots a glimpse into the future of artificial life, or are they hinting at the possibility that life, in some form, might be able to persist even after the death of the organism? The answer, as with most things in science, is likely far more complex than we can currently imagine. Section 5. Cellular Resurrection Unveiling Hidden Potential The discovery of the third state and the Lazarus genes has opened up a Pandora's box of possibilities and potential applications. One area of particular interest is regenerative medicine. Imagine harnessing the power of these Lazarus genes to repair damaged tissues, regrow organs, and even reverse the effects of aging. Scientists are already exploring the potential of using stem cells, which have the remarkable ability to differentiate into various cell types to treat a wide range of diseases. But what if we could unlock the secrets of cellular resurrection and coax our own cells to repair and regenerate themselves? The implications for human health and longevity are staggering. The third state is not just about redefining death, it's about redefining life itself. It's about pushing the boundaries of what we thought was possible and exploring the hidden potential that lies dormant within our own cells. The future of medicine might be found not in fighting death, but in understanding and harnessing the biological processes that occur after it. Section 6. The Promise of Regeneration. A New Era in Medicine. The potential of the third state extends far beyond treating individual diseases. Imagine a world where organ transplantation is no longer necessary because we can simply regrow damaged organs. Imagine a world where spinal cord injuries are no longer life-altering because we can stimulate nerve regeneration. Imagine a world where the ravages of aging are slowed or even reversed, not through cosmetic surgery but through cellular rejuvenation. While this might sound like science fiction, it's the kind of future that the discovery of the third state hints at. Of course, there are significant challenges to overcome. We are still in the very early stages of understanding the complex interplay of genes and biological processes that govern the third state. However, the potential rewards are so great that this is an avenue of research that we cannot afford to ignore. The third state might hold the key to unlocking a new era of regenerative medicine, 
one where we no longer simply treat the symptoms of disease, but address the root causes of aging and degeneration. Section 7. Redefining Death, Legal and Ethical Quandaries As with any groundbreaking scientific discovery, the third state raises a host of ethical and legal questions that society must grapple with. If cells can exhibit signs of life after the organism has been declared dead, what does this mean for our definition of death? Does death occur at the organismal level, the cellular level, or somewhere in between? The current legal and medical definition of death is largely based on the cessation of heartbeat and brain activity. However, the discovery of the third state suggests that this might be an overly simplistic view. If cells can remain active and even organized after these vital functions have ceased, then when can we truly say that someone is dead? This has profound implications for organ donation, end-of-life care, and even criminal investigations. It also raises complex philosophical questions about the nature of consciousness, the soul, and what it truly means to be alive. Section 8. The Future of Life and Death. Unraveling the Mysteries. The discovery of the third state is not just a scientific breakthrough, it's a paradigm shift, forcing us to reevaluate our understanding of life and death. It opens up a Pandora's box of possibilities, some exciting, some unsettling, and some that we can't even begin to imagine yet. What does the future hold for this research? One promising avenue is the development of new technologies that can detect and monitor the third state. Imagine handheld devices that can instantly determine whether someone is truly dead or in this third state, potentially saving lives in emergency situations. Another exciting area of research is exploring the potential of manipulating the third state. Could we develop drugs that could induce this state, allowing us to put patients in a kind of suspended animation during surgery or long-distance space travel? Could we harness the regenerative power of the third state to repair damaged tissues and organs, extending human lifespan and improving quality of life? Section 9. Astrobiology and the Search for Life Beyond Earth The implications of the third state extend far beyond our own planet. As we search for life beyond Earth, our current definitions and detection methods are largely based on what we know about life on Earth. But what if life elsewhere has evolved along different pathways, expressing itself in ways we haven't even considered? The third state suggests that life might be more resilient and adaptable than we previously thought. It's possible that life forms on other planets have evolved to survive in extreme environments, perhaps entering a state of dormancy during periods of harsh conditions and then reawakening when conditions become favorable. The discovery of the third state challenges us to broaden our definition of life and to develop new tools and techniques for detecting it. It might be that the first signs of extraterrestrial life we find are not little green men, but rather subtle biological signatures, echoes of a third state, hinting at a form of life that challenges our current understanding of biology. Section 10. Ethical Implications navigating uncharted territory. As we delve deeper into the mysteries of the third state, it's crucial that we proceed with caution and careful consideration of the ethical implications. The ability to manipulate the boundaries between life and death raises profound ethical questions that we, as a society, need to address. Who gets to decide when someone is truly dead? What are the ethical implications of keeping someone in a prolonged state of third state existence? What are the potential consequences of harnessing the regenerative power of the third state for life extension? These are not easy questions, and there are no simple answers. The discovery of the third state is a powerful reminder that science is often ahead of our ethical frameworks. It's our responsibility to engage in open and honest dialogue about the potential benefits and risks of this research, ensuring that it's used responsibly and for the betterment of humanity. Section 11. Conclusion. The Dawn of a New Biological Paradigm. The discovery of the third state marks a turning point in our understanding of life and death. It challenges our long-held assumptions, forcing us to confront the fact that the boundary between these two fundamental states is far more fluid than we once believed. This is not just about redefining death, it's about redefining life itself. 
It's about acknowledging the incredible resilience and adaptability of biological systems and embracing the vast uncharted territory that lies ahead in our quest to unravel the mysteries of life, death, and everything in between. The third state is not just a scientific curiosity. It's a call to action, a challenge to expand our thinking, to push the boundaries of what we thought was possible, and to approach these new frontiers with a sense of wonder, responsibility, and an unwavering commitment to the ethical and equitable application of this knowledge for the benefit of all.